can't take our freedom or something yeah. like that. Um, man, it's a different vibe now. Did I, uh, and correct, tell me if, if I'm repeating myself, but did I walk you through the civilization pyramid the last time I was here? Ooh, I've heard you in so many different places. I can't tell you <laughs> if it was here or not, but please give us a refresher. So I feel like what's happening is we're seeing the civilization pyramid actually play out. And, and the civilization pyramid is a pyramid that talks about exactly what you're, what you're describing, the exchange of freedom and security. Mm. The bottom of the pyramid is all of our individualism, right? You hunt and gather for you. I hunt and gather for me. You live in your cave. I live in my cave. And I don't, I don't have any say in what you do. You don't have any say in what I do. And if we need to fight, then let's fight to the death. Individualism at the bottom end of that pyramid, where we all started, where some countries still very much are, right? Moving up the pyramid, the next tier is tribalism, which is like, hey, our caves are next to each other. You're really good at hunting and gathering. At hunting, I'm really good at gathering. Let's team up. And now we'll capture efficiencies because if you're ever sick, I can make sure I collect enough food for both of us. And if I'm ever sick, you can make sure there's enough food for both of us. So now as a tribe, we're safer and to hell with the other tribes. If they come across the river, if they come, if they start hunting our buffalo, we'll kill them. So it's a step above individualism. It gives us some efficiency because we have scalability. It gives us some security because we have each other and we're united under the banner of a tribe. The next and final peer uh, uh, level of the pyramid is the state. And as you move up from individualism to the state, you start to give up your independent freedoms. But in exchange, the state is able to push down scalable efficiencies and solutions. So now there's a standing military that keeps you safe. Now there's, there's public utilities that bring you water. Now there's hospitals that bring you medicine. Now there's insurance. Now there's businesses. Now there's bakeries. Now there's all this stuff that the state helps to facilitate so that you don't have to depend on your tribe. In fact, if you want to live in California or in Austin, Texas or in Florida or in New York, you can pick your tribe. You can pick where you want to go because you're all part of the state. If you take the state off the top of the pyramid and you move the rest of the pyramid aside, you have another pyramid. And that's different levels of the state. Right. So at the bottom tier of the state, you basically have your your uh, organized state. That's very the government's very small and it gives people maximum freedom. And, you know, it's your it's your uh, uh, political parties that don't want to interfere or interfere with anybody else's political party. And then as you move up, you have what we consider to be like uh, conservative state management, which is, you know, we have enough government, but not too much government. It creates guidelines, but not heavily regulated, not heavily regulated. We focus on maximizing efficiency. We minimize uh, policing our people. Right. And then you have the highest level of the state, which is very much your kind of socialist or authoritarian state where everything is regulated. Everything is heavily managed. Everything is heavily policed. So when you put this smaller pyramid back on top of the original pyramid, you have six levels of civilization, basically. Right. The theme with all of it is that as you climb the pyramid, you are giving up freedoms in exchange for efficiencies. The beautiful thing about the United States is that we are a country where we slow down our political processes because we have two parties that are always fighting and buying. Right. So that forces us to slow down, which usually results in a more popular, more well thought out solution, even though we haven't quite seen it play out that way recently, but we slow down the velocity. So we make better, stronger decisions that are more time, time tested, but we also give individuals the right to move up and down the pyramid as they choose. So if you want to be a prepper in Kentucky that lives off the grid, you go right down the pyramid and there you go. You can, if you want to be a hyper, you know, socialist, you know, publicly declared communist that lives in whatever in New York, you can, and both people are protected by the laws of the land, but they live at different parts of the pyramid. So to your point, I feel like we are absolutely at this precipice in world events where we have to kind of decide what we want to do as individuals. But the larger question is, as individuals, we all also have a say in what we do as a nation. And that is going to be the larger impact on what we leave behind.